Welcome into another edition of Daily Wager. I am Doug Kazarian alongside Anita Marks and Joe Fortenbaugh. Guys, let's talk about the defending Super Bowl champs, Kansas City Chiefs. Caesar Sportsbook has 21 different team or player futures bets on the betting menu. A lot of options. Hopefully, we can find a couple ways to make some money. We start with the Super Bowl MVP, fresh off his half a billion dollar contract. And uh, interesting, lead the NFL in passing yards, something he's more than capable of, plus 350, four to one to win MVP, something he did two years ago, his first year as a full-time starter. But Joe, I want to talk about passing touchdown, 37 and a half. That's a big number. Would you go over or under? I play the under here, which is a heart attack in waiting anytime you're going on an under against Patrick Mahomes. But this has only happened 15 times over the last 10 years. And when I say this, I'm talking about a quarterback throwing for 38 or more touchdown passes. It's happened four times in the last five years and just twice in the last three years. In fact, the leader from last season, Lamar Jackson, only threw 34 touchdown passes. So this is a big time accomplishment. Now, two years ago, Mahomes got there with 50 TDs, which I think is playing into this number. But if you look at what he did last season, it was only 26 touchdown passes. Most will sit here and say, well, yeah, he was hurt for two games, but was he going to throw 12 touchdown passes in those two games? I think not. I don't think they're going to throw as much this season. It'll be close, but I'm going to play under here, Doug. All right. So maybe that heart attack and waiting for you. What about you, Anita? Listen, I'm going to do what you dudes do a lot. I'm going to quote a movie from Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. And at $45 million a year, I'm sorry, this dude needs to ball out. He passed for 50 touchdowns in 2018, 26 in 2019. Keep in mind, he missed two games. And he had 96 less passing attempts in 2019 than he did in 2018. Plethora of talent around him. The Kansas City Chiefs need to prove that he is worth the $45 million a year. I love the over here, Doug. All right, so I'm going to break the tie, and I'm on the under because he stinks. No, of course not. He's amazing. We all know it. <laughs> He's a future Hall of Fame. Look, no one's going to say anything otherwise, but here's the thing. It's a lot of touchdowns. Yes, he did 50 a couple of years ago, but this is a team we saw last year. Forget the injured games. It's just at times they just took the air out of the ball, wanted to move from point A to point B, get through the game. They weren't trying to let the, set the world on fire. They have bigger aspirations here. I just don't think it'll be such a Mahomes show all the time. They're going to bleed clock, lean on that run game when they have leads, and protect it along those lines. So I'm going to take the under as well. Chiefs returning nearly all their starters on both sides of the ball, but one guy new to the mix, rookie out of LSU, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. First running back off the board, goes late first round. His props at Caesars, rushing yards, 733 and a half. Eight and a half combined rushing and receiving touchdowns and 75 to one to lead the NFL in rushing if you're feeling frisky. Anita, anything jump out to you here? Yeah, I, I love the over in total touchdowns. I'm looking at six rushing touchdowns, three receiving touchdowns, possibly more. Considering they dropped him in the first round, I think Andy Reid is really going to instill him into this offense and utilize him big time. He's a great pass catching running back. He's got great vision. He's elusive. He's going to be utilized within the red zone. The running backs for the Kansas City Chiefs scored a total of 14 touchdowns last year. Damian Williams scored a total of seven. I, I do believe we'll see Damian Williams, a lot of Damian Williams to start the season. But Clyde is such an exceptional talent. I think he's going to be utilized big time. I love the over and total touchdowns for him this season. He's a dynamic player. He's like built like a bowling ball, and he was so effective out of the backfield as a pass catcher, not just running the ball. And I think Andy Reid is – basically an offensive wizard. I know so many other coaches like Sean Payton get that label and uh, McVay and the Rams, but Andy Reid's been doing this a long time and he's been very productive. He's going to find a way to utilize and maximize their first round pick. And I think they're going to lean on their running game. As I said earlier, in terms of just bleeding some second halves and protecting leads, I think this guy's going to get a lot of volume, much like the Raiders used with their rookie running back out of the SEC a year ago. Let's now talk about one of the returners for KC going to the wideout position. Tyreek Hill, his props, 1,100, 19 and a half receiving yards, eight and a half receiving touchdowns. And what about leading the NFL in receiving yards, 15 to one, and for feeling frisky or crazy, 300 to one to uh, win the MVP. That would certainly be a headline next year. Joe, anything stand out to you besides that? I know you're big on that 300 to one prop. 
<laughs> I'm going to go under on the receiving yards, which in order for me to lose, he's going to get to 1,120. During Patrick Mahomes' MVP season, you had Tyreek Hill averaging 92 receiving yards per year. That dropped off to 71.6 last season. In order for me to lose this bet, he's going to need to average 70 receiving yards a game. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but look at the competition. That was a huge drop off from two years ago to last year because of the emergence of Miko Hardman, the rookie who ended up racking up, uh, what was it, 41 targets last year. Demarcus Robinson came on really strong in his fourth season, career highs in targets, receptions, and receiving yards. You already have Sammy Watkins, Travis Kelsey, and they added Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who we were just talking about in the last segment at running back. He's a dual threat who's going to cut into everybody's targets. Hill's a freak. We know that, and he can put up big time numbers, but there just isn't going to be enough opportunity, which is why I'm going to play the under on receiving yards. As for the performance of the team, here are the numbers courtesy of Caesars. Win total of 12. The under is minus 130. The yes, no in terms of the playoffs, minus 1100 on the yes remember an extra playoff team this year in each conference minus 425 to win the division and two to one four to one to repeat as super bowl champs joe it looks like you and i are on opposite sides here of the win total you first this is going to be such a massive number i'm playing the under on 12 wins for the chiefs they were 12 and 4 last year now they have to get the 13 wins in order for the over to cash We've only had 24 teams over the last 10 years that have recorded 13 or more wins in a season. It's an average of 2.4 per year. So this isn't something that happens with a lot of frequency. Look at the AFC West. The Chiefs went 6-0 and against the division last year. You can make the case that all three, Denver, the Raiders, and the Chargers will all be better this season. On the road, Kansas City's got to go to Baltimore, Buffalo, Tampa Bay, and New Orleans. And that home field advantage that they love at Arrowhead, one of the toughest home fields in all of football. Ball. it could be non-existent this year if fans aren't allowed into games under 12 wins for the Chiefs Doug certainly a valid case and you made a good one there but I'm going to go over here because it's plus 110 as well I just don't see five losses from the Chiefs this year yes they have to go to New Orleans yes they have to go to Baltimore and yes they have to go to Buffalo but I still think they're that loaded they're returning nearly all their starters that's something Anita's talked about a lot this offseason and I'm the only thing I'm really nervous about is just the unpredictability of COVID like Mahomes can get test positive just like any other player. So that does concern me, but they are just so loaded. And yes, the division's better, but look, Mahomes missed basically three games last year, got hurt early in one of them, and they still got 12 wins. I just think they're so dynamic. And he had that ankle injury, suffered against the Colts and really bothered him in some other games. So health, uh, as long as health is going to be okay, I'm going to take over 12. As for the other props surrounding the Chiefs, two to one to win the conference, four to one to repeat as Super Bowl champs. Anita, any of those catch your eye? Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm looking at this AFC. To me, it's two teams. It's the Ravens and the, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. Both of you hit on great points. Yes, road games are going to be difficult. I'm with you, Joe. I'm looking at this Kansas City team winning 12 games, but that's going to get them into the playoffs. And once they get into the playoffs, it's a whole new world. Um, on top of that, I'm looking for great leaders of men. And that's what Patrick Mahomes, even though he's young, we see what he exudes, as well as Andy Reid. So there's a lot of intangibles there. I love Kansas City. I love the Ravens. I think the odds are, are, are really good. I think it's going to come down to a Kansas City Ravens AFC championship game. And I'm probably going to put money on both teams. And there's a really good chance that Kansas City wins the Super Bowl this year. Just a reminder, we mentioned the 49ers in that Super Bowl matchup. That will be our next team. And how to bet on them and all the options on the Caesars betting menu. We'll have that for you on Thursday. Anita, Joe, thank you very much. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.